What's up everybody? Welcome to some Atraxa Fungus. Hope you are excited. As far as opening hand goes, we have Township, uh, Catacombs, Draw a Card. Uh, is this what we want in our opening hand? Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and keep. You know, it could be worse, but it's not the best. But uh, yeah, we'll keep on it. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have to mulligan past uh, six cards. Looks like they're going to keep on that one. That'll work. But yes, we are playing Atraxa. And actually, let's make uh, Melek just a little bit bigger. It always bothers me whenever they are uh, not the same size. Well, that'll work for right now. Okay, let's see what we draw into. Draw in two. Hopefully it's a nice little one-drop uh, fungus creature. Be pretty good to get that down. And then we'll see what we get. Now, draw into Tropical Island. Hey, that's, that's not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and get the catacombs down. That way we can search up a white source. Actually, if we can go a black-white, I think that would be... Probably, yeah, that'd probably be good if we can search that up. And we're going to pass the turn. Uh, we are playing Attracts of Fungus, Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink. Then, at the beginning of your instep, Proliferate. Now, the pro Proliferate with the Fungus comes into play with, we have one of the Fungus cards in your hand. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore counter on it. So, once we get those Spore counters on there, a lot of these Fungus cards, uh, once we get at least three on there, we can remove it to create a 1-1 one -one Sapling token. So, it's not the most powerful Attracts of Build, but it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a Dirtle deck. It's something that you're going to... Uh, just want to have a little bit of fun with, <laughs> pretty much. Um, let's see, okay, and what are we drawing to? Drawn to Mana Conflict. That's actually pretty good. We'll be able to get down to Traxa with that. I'm just going to get down the Tropical Island. I think that sounds good. Anything else, we're going to go pass the turn. Playing against Melek, is it Paragon? Uh, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may cast the top card of your library if it's an instant or sorcery card. Then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your library, copy it. You may choose new copies for it. Um, squeeze re Revenge. Flip a... Flip Choose a number, flip a coin that many times until you lose a flip. Um, whatever comes first, if you win all the flips, draw two cards for each flip. Did our opponent get anything? <laughs> Lost the flip. That's a bummer. I hate that. Hey, I play Stitch and I love playing Stitch in Time. So I completely understand going for stuff like that. That happens sometimes. Uh, let's get the <laughs> get the flooded strand down. Um, anything else? Um, I think, well, yeah, we're going to pass the turn. We can always go for steady progress on our opponent's turn. Or if we really want to get a card draw, yeah, we'll wait until their turn to kind of go for it. I think I'm okay with that. Now, one of the things that really helps us get the attracts of game plan going is going to be um, Paradox Haze. It's going to allow us to get an extra upkeep, which works perfect with our uh, spore creatures on the battlefield. So, um, and in fact, let's go and crack the flooded strands. And what are we going to grab on this? We have black, white, we have black, green. We're actually, I think we're okay on mana at this point. So, I probably need, if we can grab another green, black, green. Green white source, I think that'd be good because we have mana confluence and flooding grove. Yeah, let's go and grab the uh, temple garden. And we're going to shock that one in because we're going to go for the uh, steady progress. Let's just draw an extra card, see if we can get a little bit ahead on stuff. Okay, then there's nothing really for us to pro proliferate, so we'll draw to bird. Actually, that's not too bad with burgeoning. Get a few extra lanes out on the battlefield. And drawn to Hollowed Fountain. Okay, so we can go for Wargate on like a one creature. I'd like to save Wargate for the uh, Paradox Haze. So I think at this point, let's just go ahead and get down the uh, Flooded Grove. Let's go for Burgeoning. I'd like to just get ahead on mana as quickly as possible. You know, we're kind of just sitting there, not really going to be able to do much against Melek. And I'd like to make the land drop. Um, anything else? We can get down the Hollow Fountain, and that'll be next turn. We can get that down and start uh, working towards getting down the Paradox Hage and getting down uh, Pallid. I guess that's how you say it, maybe. Let's go and put down the uh, Hollow Fountain. We don't really have anything we can do for one. Not going to pay two. Just going to put it in play tabbed. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. That'll be six total mana we can get down. And then hopefully, you know, our opponent's deck, not saying that it's going to be all in Melek, Went close the game out. Hopefully it's not, but um, if we can get some of our uh, not support pieces on the battlefield, it really helps us accelerate our uh, fungus game plan. <laughs> That's always a fun sentence to say. Uh, let's get down the Governy Township. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's gonna be six total mana. And one of the things that if we, if you, we can go for a tracks of it, you need to get the spore counters on your creatures first. So let's actually go ahead and um, put a spore counter on each fungus that you control. Let's go and get Pallid down, I, I think. It's sapling token gets plus one. Um, create a... I guess at this point it didn't really matter other than having like a 4-4 four, four body. So let's just go ahead and go for the 4-4 four, four body. Um, let's tap out. It's going to be double green. Let's tap the Flooded Grove. Double green. Get another Spore Sower. 
So we have one, two, and the tap of the hollow fountain. Okay, anything else? We're going to go past the term. So at the beginning of your upkeep, we're going to be able to put a spore counter on each of our funguses, and our fungi technically. And so whenever we get down pallid next turn, this going to be an extra spore counter on there. And then we can finally get down to tracks and hopefully kind of start outracing the Melek out there. And our opponent only has three cards in hand. So it's not, uh, and if they're cycling a desert, <laughs> desert of the fervent right now, then I do like that. So hopefully their hand's really not that active at this point right now. They do have the uh, the chemister out there to where they can pay t uh, one blue mana and draw two cards. So that's something they can definitely go for. Let's go get the mana confluence down. And that will put us at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. It'll be 7 total mana next turn. So uh, we'll see what we can kind of uh, get going. All right. And probably not going to see a swing in. They can go for the red discarded card equal to the cards of converted mana cost. So we do have to watch out for that. You know, that's something they can go for a Traxa. But if we just get a nice um, get a nice board state developed to where it's not really going to be that best or they have to keep activating each turn, hopefully we can kind of outrace that. Okay, see so we draw into drawn to Elvish Farmer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven total mana. Let's see if we just can't get as much stuff onto the battlefield as possible, and then we go for Wargate, Paradox Haze, and next turn. I think that sounds good. Let's go for the Elvish Farmer. Get that down at the beginning of your upkeep. Put a spore counter on it. And I love the card art on this card. It looks so good. Let's see if this is going to draw out a counter spell or not. Okay. And then let's go and get down Pallid. Be white, and we'll just go and leave up mana confluence. Okay, get down the spore counter. So now we're, we're kind of getting in a spot to where if we get down to Traxa or if we just simply get down the tide and we start casting these spells, we're going to get some nice spore counters uh, to kind of show for it. And right, this may draw out a counter spell. We'll see what they've got going on. Looks like they're tapping out for four mana. Rewind, counter target spell, untap up to four lands. Okay, that's fine. As long as we still get something that gets spore counters on there. Now, the only thing with spore sower that is a bummer is at the beginning of your upkeep, put it on each fungus that you control. So, um, unfortunately, Elvish Farmer is a Elvish Farmer and not a spore, as indicated by his title. Um, do we want to go and swing in for four? Yeah, let's go and push in. You know, if they're going to use the chemistry to take care of the, the spore sower, they would have gone for it by now, or if they have it... Um, you know, they declare the chemistry as a blocker. We chump block on it, and then they go for the activation. We're still going to take the chemistry out to it, so I, I don't mind trading on that card advantage. Getting in for four is uh, well worth it for me. Let's see if they do go for the activation with the chemistry. Okay, draw a couple cards, and then go and let them do their thing. And actually, I'm going to pause the video super quick. Okay, sorry, but I had to run and grab some water real quick. So our opponent gets down the Nuck Lavi. Lavi? <laughs> Lavi? I think that's how you say it. Uh, enters the battlefield, you may return target red um, sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Target blue card from your graveyard to your hand. So it looks like we're going to see Squee coming back and then Rewind. The only good thing is that they're completely out of mana. So if this is what they're going for, I'm okay with that. Um, the thing, what did they bring back? That was... Um, Re yeah, Rewind in the uh, Draw Cards ability. So that's not the end of the world. Alright, so we're going to get the Spore Counters on the Elvish Farmer. The spore Sower... Get an extra counter on the Elvish Farmer. And then we draw into... Ooh, okay, but we don't actually have, don't have a lot to support that. So now we're kind of in, not in a weird spot, but I think we do go for a Trax on this one. If we go for a Trax, so it's going to be at least one more Spore counter on the Spore Sower. And then um, we can put an extra one on there too to make it two. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Yeah, seven total mana. Let's go ahead and go for that. Let's go for a Trax. So we need to get that going. So it's going to be tapping out for green... Let's just go blue, let's go white, let's go black, and let's tap out for green. <sighs> Sorry about that. Let's get it, let's do it this way. Tropical Island into blue-green, Simic colors. And then black and then white. Okay, there we go. I do know how to tap for mana. Get down to Traxa. And then do we want to swing in with the four? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. I'm just going to just walk into that other full four over there. And let's go and pro proliferate on these two. Anything else? No, we're done. All right, we'll get an extra spore counter on there. So it's going to be spore on the battlefield once we remove the three counters from this. And the Elvish Farmer, uh, remove three spore counters to create a sapling. The main thing is that we can sacrifice the sapling to gain two life. Now, this is what makes the Atraxa deck <laughs> fun slash... I, I, frustrating to play like you have all these spores you have to get the spores in the hand and it's just the the effects that these spores really generate are just i don't know they're <laughs> they're different sometimes they're not they're not the best and it's uh 
it, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot. Of, I enjoy playing the deck, but there's just sometimes where it, it just folds to like damnation, or like a cyclonic rip because you have to wait each upkeep to get those get those triggers going and different stuff like that. And it's just I don't know. It, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy playing it, but there's just sometimes where it's just like, oh man, it's like you're trying to build a house out of like cards, and you just know you're never gonna get. Like, you get to the top, and you always just, you can never stick the roof on there, and it just always falls down, and it's a little bit frustrating, but hey, that happens. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, remove those spore counters, get a sapling onto the battlefield. Okay, and let's see what else we've got, what we draw into. Worst case scenario, we just go for the tide, and then we can start prol proliferating, get some extra stuff going. Alright, spore counter on the elvish farm, and that will be three total spore counters we can actually go for, and then one more on the spore sower. Okay, and let's see what we draw into Anointed Procession. So we can just simply get that down and get a ton of tokens. But no, our opponent has rewinded the hand, yeah, we have to watch out for a rewind. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have seven total mana. I wonder if we can Wargate for zero. I don't really do much. So if we go for the Tide, that's probably going to draw out Rewind, and I'm okay with trading on Tide. You know, it's a little slow to wait until Anointed Procession for next turn, but yeah, I guess if we're trying to play around that, let's just go ahead and go for it. It's going to be Blue, Temple Garden. We'll go for that, and that'll draw out Rewind. Then I'll put a spot next turn, and we'll go for Anointed Procession to get that stuff going out there, so I'm okay. Okay, opponent does bite on that one. They go for Rewind, that's going to hit the Graveyard. I'll tap up to four lands. They do have the uh, the White Bordered Rewind. And then anything else, we're going to pass the turn. Um, yeah, and I don't think we want to swing it with the 4-4. Four, four. Uh, we're okay with that at this point. Now, we will be able to at least make one more token off the Elvish Farmer to get one more sapling on the battlefield. So that'll be two more saplings. And then we can kind of, um, you know, outside of the actual generating the spores, what can we do with the spores to win? You know, you can get some of the, once you get a lot of the spores on the battlefield and you have all their activations going, um, you get into this weird spot to where you have this, like, weird... I'm trying to think how to describe spores. It's kind of like... It's like you're playing slivers, but on like the hardest hardest mode ever. <laughs> like you're playing like uh, like if slivers are the internet, you're like playing a fax machine with the spores. Like you have a lot of different stuff to do, but it's like uh, you're very limited as to far as the speed and what can you can really assemble at once. But once they're all on the battlefield at one time, you, you can get some stuff going. <laughs> I'm just thinking about comparing uh, funguses as like a fax machine. All right, let's see if our opponent gets lucky on the squee this time. See what they choose. And one of the things I do miss about uh, my videos is the mana crypt trigger. I always had like a little saying for it, and we don't get to do the mana crypt triggers. At oh, they lost. <laughs> that's a bummer. <laughs> this may be like a Melic coin flip deck, which if it is, that's awesome because this is what we kind of need to get some stuff going. Uh, but yeah, so you can get the once you get the saplings going, um, it kind of turns into a nice little snowball effect. But it's a very, very slow snowball effect. It takes a long time to get that ball rolling. But once it does, it looks great. And then just to hope and pray your opponent doesn't have a board wipe. Other than that, it's fun. All right, Elvish Farm and the Spore Sower. I always want to keep calling these Spore Sowers, uh, Spore Tower. I don't know why, but it's just been stuck in my head like that. All right, we're going to get extra counter on there. And let's see what we draw into. Draw into Kaya. 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 I think Kaya sounds good. I like Kaya. Exile one target creature. We don't really need to bounce any of those creatures out there. And I definitely want to go for Anointed Possession because I want to start popping some of these uh, these creatures off. Get these uh, sapling tokens on the battlefield. They're at five cards. We could start applying some pressure going for the uh, the minus two. Discard a card and draw a card. That's going to be four mana. Maybe we hit the land drop for the turn. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for that. But at this point, we're just sitting stagnant. We need to get some stuff moving. Let's go for that. And make sure we do leave up white. So let's see if this sticks. If they have a counter spell, so be it. If not, we're going to go for the uh, the minus two ability. Discard a card and draw a card. Keep our fingers crossed that we happen to um, hit the land drop for the turn. I would really enjoy that. Come on, magic gods. Give us a land. Spore mound. That's not too bad. Um, anything else for three? We could wargate for zero, but... Um, I don't think we have Dried Arbor in here. Um, I think at this point now, we'll just go and pass the turn. All right, now we do have, um, oh, what is that card? We could Wargate for that. And in fact, we'll, we'll let our opponent do the thing. We'll kind of hop over to my deck real quick and get a quick little look uh, behind the scenes really quick. Let them do their thing. 
Okay, there we go. Let's go and pop over there. It's the um, so I can see the art because it's really goofy looking art. It looks like something that'd be in the hotel room. Um, spore flower, that's what it is. Um, we can go for spore flower. We can use that for wargate. Now we can use wargate to go for the paradox haze to get those extra triggers going, or we can go for the spore flower. To we have no lands burgeoning. Sorry, man. Um, so we can use the wargate to go for the spore flower to kind of blank our opponent out from swinging in. Uh, they just have like a four four clock. Oh, Larry David's disc. Oh no. Okay. Let's see. Can we wargate anything on that? I don't think we do. There's aura mutation, which would be nice. There's short target. Well, actually, it's an enchantment, not even an artifact. We could actually wargate into Vraska. That would be an option for us to go for. Right, we'll see. I don't think we have enough mana, though. That's going to be, yeah. We're actually one away. So if we hit the land drop, we can wargate into Vraska to take care of Larry David's disc. Um, so we can definitely go for that. All right. Opponent swinging in for four at Kaya. Um, and that does not have flying. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, hey, sapling token, get out there. Do your work. I'm going to jump block on that. At least we do have the Kaya activation to get a card draw going. All right. Jump block on that. And we'll go ahead and make a uh, token off the Elvish Farmer, too. Before we go to the next step. Well, actually, let's hold on to Anointed Procession. Well, Larry, Larry David, yeah, we'll just go and wait. I mean, those counters are going to be on there anyways. It's not really going to matter. Okay, got the Spore Sower, got the Elvish Farmer going. Get those, put a Spore Counter on this. Let's go up to five. And let's see what we draw into. Draw into Rampant Growth. Let's go and go for the uh, Kaya activation. Each opponent discards a card, then we draw a card. <sighs> would love to hit that lane drop for the turn. That would be really nice. And, you know, it's actually not bad with Kaya, kind of attacking our opponent's hand on this one. And uh, our opponent hadn't gotten down Melek yet. You know, maybe that's a little bit of a... Uh... Oh, beautiful. It hit the Wood of Foothills. Okay. We're, ta we're going to be tapping out for this. If they didn't crack on um, a counter spell for Kaya, I feel like we're okay with the Wargate. Um, let's go ahead and grab a, uh, let's grab a Bayou. That we need... Probably need a... Yeah, we need some more Black Swords. Let's grab a Bayou. Let's go for Wargate. Uh, let's tap out for Bant Colors. That's going to be green. Um, actually... Use that for blue. Let's go blue, green, and then white. And that's going to be one, two, three, and four. Okay. Tap out for five. Uh, that's going to be Vraska. We can get that down and hopefully go for Larry David's disc. Now, if they have a counter spell, they've got it. Uh, I don't mind going for it. Draw two cards. All right, they're digging. I'm okay with that. The main thing is we just want Larry David's disc off the battlefield. Nah, that's the main thing. Because board wipes don't. Oh, it looks like it's going to stick. All right, let's go ahead and grab Vraska. There we go. Grab Vraska. Enters the battlefield. Let's go ahead and destroy target non-land permanent. Take care of Larry David's disc. Get out of here. Go and get. And then we can still go ahead and make a token off either of these to kind of chump block on those creatures. All right. Anything else? We're going to go and pass the turn. So, yes, this is exactly how magic should be drawn up. It's turn 10, and <laughs> we don't have our po – both of us are only, you know, almost at our starting life total, and I've got a few spore counters on the battlefield. But at this point right now, I kind of like that we do have um, the Planeswalkers on the battlefield, so we're just going to go ahead and just kind of hold up our Spore Sowers and different stuff like that. Um, we could have swung in to kind of get a little bit of a clock going with the Spore Sower, um, but I like leaving it up to kind of jump, keep the uh, Chemister in check, and the uh, the Science Teacher over there, and then we can always start making some uh, Sapling Tokens to, to block on the uh, the Creepy Beast Creature Token. That's that's really creepy right there. I wish I didn't click on that art. That's a lot of eyes. Um, anyway... We're going to recover from that. Yeah, that's what... I don't know why, but, like, the, the 4C card, it's like a blue cantrip, I think. Um, that... Man, I can't really handle pictures that have multiple eyes on it like that. It's just really hard for my brain to kind of process that. I'm a very visual person. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a, like, I'm a visual learner, and I like seeing how things are done, and I can do that. And when I see somebody with... Uh, turn and burn. Okay, let's get the... Until end of turn, target creature loses all abilities, becomes a one uh, red weird with base power, tough, deals two damage to that creature or player. Uh, let's go ahead and make a in response. Let's make a sapling token in response to that. Okay. Spore sower, hey, you put in some work. Thank you very much for your service. Unfortunately, you got turned and burned by the Is It Guild. I don't know what's up with the Is It Guild. I just had a, had a du double Is It feature <laughs> yesterday, and. Uh, we're playing against Melek today. It's like we got the whole crew because we had uh, Mizix, we had Niv Mezzet, and we had Melek. And so now, yeah, I guess we, owe, I guess somehow I owe them money or something. All right, Subterranean Tremors deals two damage to um, each creature without flying. Now that will be our. Let's go and make some uh, make some spore counters. We're going to sack these in response. It's going to be two life. So I mean, unfortunately, that's all we can do at this point right now. 
just gain a little bit extra life, kind of get a little bit ahead. Okay, and let's go ahead and I like the different sapling tokens on there. Let's go and sacrifice the sapling, gain two life. Elvish farmer, love that card art. Looks good. Looks. Uh, I wish that I wish they did more old school art like that on some of the new stuff. Okay, we got a 24, two damage. It's going to take care of the elvish farmer. It's a bummer, but that happens. But we do have a nice chunk of mana. You know, they can swing in and take care of both both of our planeswalkers. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We do have eight total mana. Uh, so what we can do is we can go for if we hit the land drop and hit, we go nine mana and we go spore mound and then go for anointed procession. So that way we can get a little bit extra uh, sapling tokens on the battlefield. Now we do not have lands. We do not. No lands. And then, you know, as far as the clock goes, we're looking at six. Um, so we've got about a four-turn clock. Uh, destroy target enchantment. It's going to sapling tokens. Okay. If we're going to go for that, and we want to go for a land drop next turn, let's go for anointed procession. I think I'll... Yeah, if we do some setting up, let's go for anointed procession. Let's do that. Let's tap out for green. Let's tap out for white. Let's go for the Govany Township. Okay. We're going to get that down. And I think with Anointed Procession on the battlefield, I'd like to holding up Spore Mound to where maybe we can cast Spore Mound next turn, get a landfall trigger, get a couple of extra things on the battlefield. And then, you know, if we want to go for Aura Mutation on Burgeoning, we can go for that to get those saplings on the battlefield. Then maybe, just maybe, we can go Govany Township activations on a lot of these saplings. I'm just trying to set up a, a really big turn for next turn because, like I said, we only have a four-turn clock. And then uh, uh, tracks have been sent back. Yeah, we'll see if we can't maybe get down to tracks for the next turn. But I, I kind of like this. You know, if our opponent gets out a big artifact, we do have the or I mean, excuse me, an enchantment. Uh, we do have the aura mutation to kind of get those on the battlefield. But I think at this point right now, if we just simply go for burgeoning, just cashing it in from one sapling token, I think I'm okay with that. All right, see so what opponent's tapping out for. Hedron archive. Oh, I wish Aura Mutation was Artifact or Enchantment. That'd be that'd be really sweet. That hey, that happens sometimes. But yeah, if we go for Anointed Procession this turn and get down Spore Mound next turn, worst case scenario, Rampant Growth. We just Rampant Growth for one. That'll be one land on the battlefield. Now, if we hit like a Fetch Land, that's going to be an extra uh, one more Sapling Token. It'll be another Sapling Token. So just if we're trying to play to our outs and let's build a big board state as quickly as possible, I kind of liked holding on to Rampant Growth on this one. All right, so it looks like our opponent's going to be swinging in for four. It's going to put us down to 20. And uh, this has been a really fun match so far. It's, uh, I feel like both these decks are kind of about on the same power level. You know, maybe uh, Melek's a little bit more powerful and they're kind of maybe holding back a little bit. With If they are, I do appreciate that because this deck is uh, it's a little a little janky. All right, let's go and choose Burgeoning on this one. That's going to be our best use at this point right now. We're not hitting the lands. And that'll be two with Anointed Procession, so I'm, ex I'm okay with that. Okay, so we have Aura Mutation on the stack right now. Let's see if they have a Counterspell. You know, if they want to... I, I doubt if they have a counter spell, that's what they're gonna go for. But if they do, I, I'll take it. You know, it's just a couple, a couple sapling tokens. What's the worst that a couple of sapling tokens are gonna do? I don't know. Nothing. Ha ha ha. All right. And drawn to. Uh, oh, and that's not too bad. We need, we need some fungus people out there to really take advantage of that. But we don't hit the land drop though. That's a bummer. Um, yeah. Let's go and go spore mound. Let's see if we can't get this to stick. Uh, let's tap the bayou. Let's tap out for flooded grove. Double green. Um, let's go for Spore Mound. It's going to be one, two, three. Get that on the battlefield. And then we can ramp up growth for a basic to get a couple more. You know, playing around a counter spell. If they have it, they have it. Let's go and go ramp up growth. It's going to come into the battlefield tap. So that's uh, we can't really take advantage of it this turn right now. But at least we're slowly building towards some sapling tokens. And what are we going to go for? We're way okay on green. And we do have a couple blue sources. We're going to grab another. Uh, actually, let's go another green. We have pretty heavy green in the hand. All right, go for another one. Let's make a couple more saplings on the battlefield. And then next turn, we go for uh, my cloth. Uh, Mike, my cloth. Uh, butchered that one. It's been a long video. Uh, but yeah, so we can get that down and devour a lot of these creatures. Kind of puts us in a spot to where if there's some spot removal, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one sapling for each plus one counter on it. So we may not go just hog wild with... Uh, with the, the fungus in the hand, so I'd hate to lose out to some sort of big converted mana cost spell in the hand. And then take care of it, so. But we'll see if we can't get some stuff going. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pass it over to our opponent. <sighs> Let's see what we've got going on for next turn. We do have, um, we have Havenwood in the hand, plus one for each spore counter. Like I said, we don't have any spore counters on them right now. So it's almost kind of like we're on the Gevany Township or Bust. A uh, Talent of the Telepath. Okay. And that's target opponent. Yeah, well, we'll see what they flip off that. Incident or sorcery. Yeah, I don't Maybe it's something good. 
Charter, yeah, I was about to say, they may not be that good. I think that's, uh, yes, yeah, Charter Course or Cultivate, so I would assume our opponent's going to go for Charter Course. Yeah, there's not a lot of, um, I'm trying to think, uh, like, if you're going for a bribery on Atraxa, there's a few targets in there that you can go for, for this Atraxa Fungus deck, but it's kind of like you went to Black Friday, and you get there, and there's just kind of, like, candy bars left, and, you know, candy bars are cool, but they're not as cool as some of the big, big creatures out there. Um... All right, opponents goes for Charter Course. We're going to get those human wizard tokens on the battlefield. We have human wizards versus uh, sapling tokens. I love it. This is exactly what Commander's about. And then the final iteration, and it flipped. Um, if you can, when did it flip? Whenever you create a, if you control three or more wizards, can transform in. That was a wizard, uh, beast, and then a uh, wizard, an insect horror. Okay. Man, I need to start, uh, I kind of want to build like a blue-red value deck like this. I have, I had Nin the Pain Artist, which is a lot of fun, but that was kind of trying to set up, um, Stitch in Time and copy, a lot of copy spells. Um, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to just go blue-red, just value. I like a deck like this. Mainly, I just want to play with the, uh, Dawson of Perfection. I, I think that's a pretty fun card to get those human wizard tokens on the battlefield. Uh, but if you are new to magic and you don't uh, get the the line, uh, basically what happened is that there's Delver of Secrets, which is something that transforms into this card, and then now it finally makes it's just kind of like a, a throwback to Delver of Secrets. So if you want to go look that card up, go look it up, and you'll kind of see why the uh, the Dawsent uh, of Perfection kind of makes sense. All right, opponents tapping out for four mana. Like I said, we've got Governy Township next turn, but I don't know if that gets us out from underneath all these human wizard tokens. Um, we could go for Atraxa, but I'm afraid that's just going to be six mana, uh, chemistry activation, <laughs> take care of Atraxa. That uh, puts them having a 4-4, four, four. oh, Volcanic Vision. All right, return it from your graveyard to your hand, deals damage equal to the, to, uh, to your opponent's. Verted mana cost to each creature your opponent's can, oh, bummer. So th they're targeting Rewind, so they're going to bring that back to the hand. It's going to completely wipe our board out. All right, you got it. Bye, funguses. Yeah, you can see what I'm talking about. Where you know, just board wipe completely. <laughs> just sets your back. Oh, there it is. 4C. Yeah, I hate that card. It, it's really hard for me. Like, uh, yeah, I'm a big visual person, and it makes my eyes, like, not really process what's going on. All right, let's see what we draw into. See if this is it. If not, we're going to be dead. We've got a bunch of human wizards staring at us really weirdly. Um... Yeah, we get down to Traxa, they go for the chemistry activation. They have more than enough to close it out. Hey, good game. Definitely enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. But yeah, unfortunately, that's Fungus right there. And the, when I play this Atraxa Fungus deck, um, stuff like this happens, man, where it's just, you know, sometimes it works perfectly. Other times we try our best to get it going, and unfortunately it doesn't happen. But sometimes it leads to these fun commentary games. But if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed your Fungus Among Us, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.